I'm Dr. Kimberly Tanish. I'm the program director of the OTA program at Central Penn College. Yeah, of course. So when I was much younger, probably around seven or eight, my grandmother had had a stroke um, and was going to rehab um, to get her back to her level of function. And she was receiving both physical therapy and occupational therapy. So that was my first exposure to it. Um, so I started and I have my bachelor's in science in health sciences. Um, and then I went on and I was in a five or a three slash two program for my master's degree. Um, so I kind of got both of them simultaneously. And then I earned my master's degree in occupational therapy from St. Francis University. Um, I practiced for approximately five years, um, pretty much working with the geriatric population in the home health settings and skilled nursing facilities. Um, things like that. I was a staff therapist at several of those facilities. Um, and then I moved on and moved up into some management positions and became the director of rehab um, at one facility. And then at one point I was managing three facilities. Um, and then about five years into my career, I decided to wanted to continue my education a little bit more um, and expand my education in occupational therapy. So I went back to school and earned my clinical doctorate in occupational therapy from Rocky Mountain University of Health Professions in Utah. Yeah, um, so I've had it several. Um, one of the my biggest mentors when I was in school was actually my academic field work coordinator. Um, she just kind of was that person that I always wanted to be. She was very um, straightforward. She was very professional. Um, she had accomplished a lot. She was very encouraging and things like that. Uh, but then when I actually got out into the field, one of my biggest mentors was the first OTA that I worked with. Um, as a new grad OT, it was very scary to be in the field, and she was somebody that was very supportive, very creative, gave me really good intervention ideas, was always there to give me support and things like that. So she was one of my biggest mentors. Um, so I think one of the biggest setbacks that's as frustrating as a therapist is some of the reimbursement issues that we run into. Um, clients not being able to stay um, in therapy or get therapy for as long as they need to because of reimbursement issues or insurance issues or things like that. Um, so advocacy became very big for me um, as a therapist and then also as my, in my role as a director of rehab, um, writing letters to insurance companies, to providers and things like that, justifying um, why people needed continuing therapy, especially and why OT was needed for them to meet their goals. Um, I think, you know, transitioning into this role where I'm at now and being the program director has been a really big success for me. It's kind of something I've always envisioned myself doing, sharing my passion with OT, with, with new people who want to come into the profession. Um, I also think as I went from a staff therapist up to a director of rehab, that was something that I was really, really proud of. Um, that's personal kind of stuff that happened. Um, anytime my patients were successful, that's always a win for me and getting them to their goals, doing things that they're able to do, even if it's something as simple as brushing their teeth on their own or putting their shoes on or something like that. Those are always big wins for me. Um, so I don't know if it's interesting so much as it's something that stands out to me. Um, I had a patient who he had a very complicated medical background. Um, somebody that I had worked with for up to like six months and he was just struggling, not making a lot of progress, not making a lot of progress. But myself and the PTAs that we were working with him together um, just kind of never gave up. We were always just doing those little things, those again, those little wins to get him to do things. And we were getting to the point that he was getting frustrated. We were getting frustrated because we weren't necessarily seeing the progress that we wanted to see. Um, and then none of us gave up. And then all of a sudden, I remember the day that it happened, he got up and he walked 50 feet across the gym like that. And it was such a huge win. And it was so exciting for all of us. I mean, we were all crying. We were all hugging. We were all excited. So that was probably the biggest thing that stands out for me. Um, I think somebody that has a large amount of empathy, somebody that really wants to help other individuals um, that really values maintaining a good quality of life. Um, and finding new ways to do that. Um, part of being an OT and an OTA is being creative and finding different ways to do our everyday activities. So somebody who can embrace that, I think is really, really a good skill to have. Um, I think being an OTA is great. Um, OTAs get to be in there with the patients um, much more than even I do as the, as the OT. Um, OTAs specialize in interventions. They're the ones that are in there doing the creative stuff, being spending time with the patients and things like that. So if you're somebody that's really interested in getting in there and actually working with people day to day, I think that that would be um, why you would choose an OTA versus an OT career. As an OT and OTA, we work with individuals a lot on restoring their independence with their activities of daily living or ADLs. 
Um, and a lot of times we do that after individuals have had a surgery or an injury or things like that. And we do that through the use of adaptive equipment. So what I have with me here is a piece of adaptive equipment that doesn't look like it does anything or wouldn't make sense, but this is what we call a sock donner in the OTA world. Um, and what this does is this helps somebody put their socks on on their own. So if somebody would have, our patient's going to pretend she just had a hip surgery, and after you've had hip surgery, you can't bend at the waist and reach down to your, to your feet to put your sock on like you normally would. So this is a means to make somebody more independent with that. So Amber, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to put your socks on with this. Okay. okay. So sock donner, okay, and your fun pair of socks here, okay. So this is the bottom, mm -hmm. okay, and then this is where your toes go. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll tell people to put it between their knees just to kind of give you both hands to work with, okay? Mm -hmm. You want the bottom of your sock mm -hmm. to go on the bottom of the sock donor. Okay. So you just stretch it over, and once you get it started, you can lift it up, okay? Just kind of scrunch it on there, okay? Okay. Nice and flat on the top. Okay. Try not to bring the top over those uh, knots right there. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to hand it to you. You're okay. going to throw it down to the ground, okay? Hold on to both handles. Fish your foot in as far as you can, then just wiggle the ropes up, and then your sock will slide on. Cool. Okay. So if you want to give that one a try for me. Sure. Yep, get your foot in there as much as you can. Cool. Beautiful. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. You want to try this one for sure. me? Sure. So again, yep, the bottom of the sock goes on the bottom. Just put my foot there so you have a little leverage. Perfect. And there you go. And now we've enabled our patient to now go home and not have to depend on somebody else to be able to put their socks on. So it just, again, leads to their independence, which is ultimately our goal with what we're doing with OT. So now we'll take a little tour of our OTA lab space. So we spend a lot of time in our classes um, teaching a lot of hands-on um, practical activities that you would do. Um, so again, OTAs deal with function, so we're always looking at how are you doing getting in and out of bed, getting in and out of the bathroom, the shower, um, the kitchen, all of those kind of things. Um, so here we kind of have a bed set up. Um, we have the bed set up with some um, side rails and some arm rails that would help people enable get in and out of bed and help them roll if they needed that so we can teach students how to use that. Um, we have several different wheelchairs available. We teach a lot of wheelchair positioning if individuals are not able to do um, their functional mobility um, or ambulation to be able to walk without a device. We teach a lot of wheelchair positioning. Um, over in this area, we have a simulated bathroom set up with a lot of different equipment options, a raised toilet seat, some bars, um, a tub, a shower that we can practice transfers in, a variety of different transfer benches, just all kind of adaptations we can make. So over here, we have some different, just some different modalities set up that OTAs will interact with in their day-to-day um, -day careers. We have a paraffin bath that we would use, um, a hydroculator or a hot tax machine that we would use to provide heat to our clients, um, and a fluidotherapy machine. So this is helpful for, again, for heat and for scar management and things like that. Um, over here, we kind of move into our simulated kitchen setup. So we have a stove, a refrigerator, a microwave, a coffee pot, kind of all the things that you would use um, in your day-to-day -day life, right? In your normal kitchen, we have our cabinet stocked with some things so that we can work on getting things in and out of the cabinets if you would have a disability or things like that. Um, you see our desks are a little different here in the OTA department. They're actually massage tables because we use these in class. Um, for assessing range of motion and teaching how to assess range of motion and strength, as well as different transfer techniques and things like that. 